His unit had been pushing through a labyrinth of tunnels and access halls and had encountered stiff resistance every step of the way. This included everything from Jordicas to BX series commando droids. This was the last year of the conflict and the Separatists had increased production of advanced droid models. And the only thing the clones had to balance that out was better training, more experience and equipment. The point is it was a tough time to be a clone trooper. By this point, the job involved a lot more complex missions than just gunning down B-1 battle droids in parade formation. And the stress of such missions should have been especially high for someone like Tup. You see, he was relatively green at this point. The Battle of Umbara had actually been his first firefight, making him at least three years younger than the original batch of clones who fought at Geonosis. Yet Tup seems to adjust to combat very well. He actually saves the life of an ARC trooper during this battle. Now, during this moment, Tup is clearly more aware of his surroundings than even a seasoned veteran like Fives. But then suddenly, he begins to experience an abrupt change to his cognitive functions. Hey, you all right? Yeah, I, I just... Come on, this is a textbook battle. We've run through this a million times before in training. Yeah, I, I know. I, I just... I, I don't feel like myself. This is the first sign of Tup feeling the effects of the inhibitor chip that was secretly implanted into his brain by the Sith many years earlier. Every clone had one and it had one true purpose and that was to force the clones to shoot their Jedi commanders. Follow me. Jedi. Tup, what's the matter with you? Uh, uh no, nothing, I, I'm fine. And for some reason that day, Tup's inhibitor chip fired off early, causing him to execute Jedi General Tiplar in the middle of a firefight. What I want to know is what happened to Tup. He was a relatively healthy and very capable, some might say exceptional, clone trooper. Why did his chip malfunction when millions of other chips seemed to work perfectly fine? This question has bothered me for quite some time and the answer has eluded me, uh, but recently I was doing a bit of research and I saw this one clip from the Clone Wars series and I think, uh, I have a new theory, and this one actually might be it. It's relatively complicated, so bear with me. But before we continue, a quick word from our sponsor for today's video, Onusaber.com. They are the premier sellers of lightsabers on this side of the Hydean Way. Onusaber.com has some truly unique designs, like the hilarious Last Brick Lego-inspired saber to the more intimidating Huntsman, which is widely used by the Inquisitors. And right now, they also have a great deal for you guys. If you buy two sabers from the same collection on their website, you get one of those sabers for 50% off. For instance, you can grab the Wraith Bearer from the Padawan Collection and pair it with the Assassin X, also from the Padawan Collection. Once you add both of these sabers to the cart, the savings will be applied at checkout. Now, if you guys want just one lightsaber, the entire store is still 30% off with free shipping. For more information on this deal, check out the description down below. Also, you guys can use our promo code EWOK, that's all caps, for $15 off. I really recommend you guys check out ownersaber.com. They really have some awesome products. Thank you for your patience. On to the rest of the video. So first, how do these inhibitor chips work? Well, these are organic chips designed to fit into the anatomy of a clone trooper without drawing too much suspicion from medtechs. As a matter of fact, it takes an atomic level brain scan to detect the chip, which just is not a normal everyday procedure you would perform on a clone. This organic chip also integrates into the clone's tissue without too much of a problem. It's designed to be hidden. Now, how does this chip work? Well, in order to understand that, we have to listen to Chief Kaminoan scientist Nala say. She says the following. How do you explain this? That is a structural inhibitor chip, which is supposed to prevent you from being aggressive, like your source, Django Fett. Now, obviously, Nala Se is lying here. She was secretly contracted by Count Dooku to insert the chip, and she was now trying to hide this secret from the Jedi and clones. But all good lies have a good amount of truth in them to make them seem more convincing. The inhibitor chips were structural chips, which means that it could reroute, block, and divert natural brain signals. The Kaminoans were masters at their craft, and they had perfected it during a climate catastrophe that almost destroyed their entire species. It seems like the Kaminoans were able to figure out how neural activity translates into thoughts and actions. Brains are complicated networks of nerve cells, along which chemicals and electrical signals are sent. Different parts of the brain are associated with different cognitive processes, and in theory, if you're able to decipher the firing of these neurons and what they did, you could create a specific chemical concoction that could make the brain fire in such a way that it forces the clone to carry out Order 66. Think about those experiments where you, you know, send some electricity through a cadaver. 
That's kind of what's happening here. Well, actually not really. What the Kaminoans are doing here is like a million times more complicated and probably belongs in the realm of science fiction for now. Because you're not just simply activating the nervous system, you're actually implanting a complex idea into a clone's head using a few chemicals. In our own world, the closest thing we have to this is maybe hypnosis or cognitive conditioning, where ideas are repeatedly reinforced with either positive or negative reinforcement to implant a certain behavior or idea. People who might be weak in certain skills or activities can depend on their brain's neuroplasticity to create newer and stronger pathways that allow them to change their behavior. This is also how stroke victims or individuals who suffered traumatic brain injuries recover. The fact that the inhibitor chip can do this just by releasing some chemicals is remarkable. And what makes it even more impressive is the fact that it can be turned on simply by someone saying Order 66. I imagine there was at least one incident in which a Jedi and their clone troopers were chilling inside of a Chinese restaurant until someone orders uh, lobster egg foo young. So now we kind of understand how the chip works. Well, I hope you understood. That was kind of a magical description. But now let's take a look at all of the different theories on why Tup's chip went haywire. One of the first things that Nalase guesses is that Tup has encountered some kind of parasite or virus that has taken over his cognitive functions. This is the Star Wars galaxy after all, and the sheer amount of dangerous microscopic life forms that exist is probably overwhelming. It also makes me wonder why people aren't wearing hazmat suits or pressurized suits when they go into new planets and why there are, isn't like quarantine when people from one planet enter another one. It just seems kind of dumb. But anyway, I, I digress. Nalase ends up doing a full scan on Tup's body. And what does she find? There does not seem to be any sign of infection in the blood. How curious. So we can rule that out. Our next theory actually comes from the show, The Bad Batch. Clone Force 99, as you all know, was a mutated group of clone commandos. Their mutations drastically changed their appearance and also cognitive functions. And because of this, when Order 66 occurred, they were all able to resist its call. Even Crosshair, who took some pot shots at the Jedi, ultimately did it because he really wanted to follow orders. It's been well documented that the Kaminoans inhibited the cognitive functions of clones to engineer them to follow orders without question. We sure don't! Obviously, we are different. But eventually, one member of the group, Wrecker, begins experiencing headaches that are a result of trauma to his head. As he suffers repeated blows, Wrecker begins experiencing Order 66-like symptoms, but interestingly enough, it didn't just make him want to kill Jedi, it just made him murderous and want to kill everyone around him, including even Omega. I think what happened to Wrecker here is that he had a brain injury, and that caused swelling, and that swelling really messed up the inhibitor chip on the side of his head. Once again, if we go back to Tub, it doesn't seem like he had any major brain trauma or damage. He goes from being relatively aware and clear-headed and then just rapidly declines out of nowhere. I think that rules out the possibility of a serious head injury causing this. Another possibility for Tub's inhibitor chip being set off is the fact that he is a later generation clone. The original genetic material from Django Fat continues to degrade. Then it is time to begin the next phase. So it's possible that Tup has a genetic disorder, which makes him interact poorly with the inhibitor chip in his brain, just like how Clone Force 99 kind of interacted with the inhibitor chip in their own different way as well. Now there is one last possibility, and I think this is actually the reason why Tub's inhibitor chip was set off. I was recently doing a video about the Battle of Umbara, and I got to the scene where General Ponkrell has revealed his true nature and is now being hunted down by several clones. Clone Trooper Tup was one of the many of the 501st who joined in this chase. Even though it was his first real battle, Tup had been thrown into some truly challenging combat situations because of Ponkrell's poor leadership. Now, Tup seizes the initiative and forms a pretty interesting plan. He even manages to save a bunch of clone troopers who are running away from Ponkrell. This guy is a natural born leader. <laughs> You see, Tub earlier on the campaign had witnessed just how dangerous the local flora could be and set a trap for the eager Jedi, who gets snared up by a carnivorous viscous plant. Ponkrell manages to figure out a way to escape the plant, but is then immediately stunned by Tup. The fact that Tup, a rookie, was able to trap such a powerful Jedi all by himself is extremely impressive. But like every other trooper on Umbara, Tuck was in shock. They had been conditioned and trained to believe that their Jedi officers was someone who was looking out for them and someone they could trust. Firing a stun round into Ponkrell went against Tup's training. And this most likely had an effect on his brain chemistry. 
So we talked about how inhibitor chips worked and how they conditioned the brain to repeat a specific neural pathway which leads to a specific behavior. But this also means that that specific neural pathway needs to be planted much earlier on. You can't just create it the second that Order 66 happens. It would be much easier for clones to reject this behavior unless it was already reinforced. And so these inhibitor chips would have to somehow secretly condition the clones to be ready to kill the Jedi and somehow not let the clones know that they were doing it. And I think the way that the inhibitor chip does this is through subconscious routines. You see, many of our important bodily functions happen without our conscious thought, like breathing or blinking, for instance. This brings up another very interesting aspect of the clones, and we see Tup talk about it right before he expires. Brother, what mission? You... you know the one. The, the mission. The one in our dreams that never ends. The one in our dreams. Oh, brother. It's a nightmare of a never-ending war, and Tup is not the only person to have talked about this. The mission. Nightmares. They're finally over. First of all, this is completely horrific that every clone has a nightmare every time they fall asleep. I imagine a lot of these clones wouldn't want to fall asleep at all. And I also believe that this is actually the result of the inhibitor chip conditioning the clones to kill the Jedi while they're sleeping. And so when Tup shoots Pon Krell while he's conscious, he performs an action along the same neural pathway that already exists in his mind. And by repeating this action, he actually manually switches on the inhibitor chip. This isn't the same as hearing Order 66, mind you, but in the long run, it has the same effect. And eventually, by the Battle of Ringo Vinda, just a few months later, while under great stress, the process kicks into gear once again and turns Tup into a Jedi killer. Out of all the theories that exist about Tup, this one actually makes the most sense to me. And, you know, by going through Tup's career, it's actually kind of sad. He was a very competent clone. I think he would have had a really terrific career within the clone army, you know, if it didn't collapse within like the next few months or so. Well, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about my theory. Which one do you think it's correct? Do you believe that the one I chose is the right one?